Okay, so now we know how a motor works, we can look at induction and the important application of induction, which is transformers. So we need to start off by talking about what induction is, and then we need to relate it to transformers, and then we need to do a little bit of maths on how transformer works and how the ratio of the voltages um, relates to the ratio of the turns on the transformer. So to start us off, here's a little animation to show us about induction. So induction happens when a magnet moves into a coil of wire. Notice once it's in there, if it's not moving, there's no induced current. Okay, if we take it out again, you'll notice that the current goes the other way. Okay, so if we keep moving it in and out, we're going to make some alternating current. Okay, but crucially, if the magnet's stationary, then there's no current made. Okay, so we're not inducing, we're not causing the current to flow in the wire unless the magnet is actually moving. Okay, you might remember from class the example we did with the induction torch, and here there's a coil of wire, you can see the uh, copper there. There's a strong magnet inside, you shake the magnet, it goes in and out of the coil, that makes the electricity to make the light light up. Ways that we can increase the current, we can have a stronger magnet, we can have more turns on the coil, and we can move the magnet faster. Okay, so how does this relate to transformers? Well, we need to start off quite simply. So we need to be thinking about a circuit, but here's a circuit with a bulb in it, okay? And here's a circuit that's just got a little um, sensitive ammeter in it so that we can see if there's a current flowing or not. Notice there is no current flowing in this circuit, even though there's a current flowing in this circuit. Now think back what, to what you know about um, the current through a wire in a magnetic field. There is a magnetic field around this wire because there's a current flowing through the wire, but there's no changing magnetic field. So on this side, it's as if you'd put a permanent bar magnet and just left it there. That will not cause a current to flow in this wire. How can we make a current flow in this wire? Well, we can change the magnetic field. The way to do that in this circuit is just to turn that off. When we turn it on, we get a current. When we turn it off, we get a current. If we kept turning this on and off all the time, notice we'll make a current flowing over the circuit. What kind of current will it be? Well, it's going forwards and backwards, so you'll remember from additional physics, if the current goes forwards and backwards, that's AC. What we're doing on the left-hand side, well, I'm kind of doing AC here, aren't I, because the current's going on and off. Okay? So, how does that relate to a transformer? Well, a transformer is just a sort of um, cleverer version of that where we're making a better link between the two circuits. So here's my primary circuit. I'm putting six volts in. You notice this symbol here means we're using AC. I've got 10 turns on my primary coil. If I put AC through an electromagnet, so this half is an electromagnet, okay, what I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a changing magnetic field. I've put a little bar going up and down there to try to show that, but a changing magnetic field on this side. This is a soft iron core, so it can be magnetized. There's no electricity flowing around this core. There's just a magnetic field. When it comes to this side, I've then got a changing magnetic field in this side, and all I need to do is to wrap some turns around there on a coil, and I'm going to get a voltage at the other side. This is the key idea of how a transformer works. You put in AC, you get a changing magnetic field, the magnetic field gets transferred around the core, you get a change in magnetic field inside the secondary coil that induces a current in a secondary coil. Okay, quite often on the exams that's a four or five mark answer to explain how a transformer works using those simple steps.